Will crypto survive a recession? It's a big question, right? And it's an important one to ask right now because there's no doubt it's a bad time for the global economy right now with inflation reaching 40-year highs and central banks threatening a series of rate hikes after rate hikes after rate hikes. Now, it's also a bad time for the crypto market seeing as prices have fallen steeply around the same time that economic activity has shrunk. If a recession isn't here already, many economists estimate that it's coming very soon. The largest in the world, the U.S. economy, contracted or decreased by 1.6% in the first quarter of 2022. And even if it somehow doesn't contract, contract in the second quarter, a growing number of economists are predicting a recession of in 2023. Heck, we may be in a recession right now in 2022. But there are some good signs that we want to talk about in this video that maybe point to a short-term uh, fix, if you will, given the prices of some commodities. So we're going to talk about that and also talk about the overall crypto market and what it could look like after a recession hits. Let's say the recession hasn't hit yet. What will the crypto market look like after it does hit? Well, opinions are mixed on whether we'll see a real severe recession in the coming months or years, and it's also mixed on whether any such recession would have a huge impact on major crypto assets. Now, a lot of people believe that it will have an impact on smaller cap assets, smaller NFT projects, especially the ones who have abandoned their projects and are not working hard in a bear market. Now, there's an argument that crypto asset prices are not correlated with the global economy so much as stock prices, which could rally again, stock prices, that is, if inflation subsides and rate increases stop. When and if those rate increases will stop? Well, <laughs> we don't really know. But there's no question a recession or whatever this is, is already hurting crypto. And of course, some of the huge events that we've seen with Luna and Celsius and Voyager are also making a huge impact. Now, let's jump in here. And it says many economists and analysts seem to agree that the U.S. and many other developed economies are already in a recession, given that the technical definition of a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative growth. If that's the technical definition we're going by, then yes, we are in a recession. Now, recent surveys of consumer confidence are showing their worst readings for decades. People are feeling the pain and are cutting back on investments as well as on spending, which is what you do when you're in a recession. This is coming from Glenn Goodman, a crypto asset analyst and author of The Crypto Trader. He also says the bottom line is 2022, and I love this, is the hangover from one of the biggest asset price bubbles in history on the back of unprecedented liquidity, fiscal, and monetary. I agree 100%. 2021 was a blessing for anyone who was invested in tech stocks or crypto or you know these NFT projects that absolutely went bonkers. It was a blessing. And hopefully, hopefully, most people took profits, but many people did not right? So it's a lesson learned. And I had my fair share of ones that I did not take profits in and some others where I did. However, 2022 is a huge hangover from the money printing. And again, in these words, the biggest asset bubble in history. Now, if we scroll on down, there's something else I want to get to. For the immediate future, we're looking at some things in terms of commodity prices, which are plummeting, oil, gas, copper, Cotton, wheat, corn, and many other vital commodities are now way below their peak prices. This should, in theory, help bring inflation down, said Goodman, in the immediate future. Of course, looking at this more macro, the rest of the year into 2023, we shall see.
Indeed, oil prices have been falling repeatedly over the past few weeks, which is good to see. I did see it uh, below $4, which I know sounds crazy that we're excited about that. Below $4, uh, $4 down in Georgia. I'm like, okay, that's a good sign, right? This may end up with instigating some kind of self-corrective mechanism, though, if these commodity prices continue to fall, with the reduced prices eventually prompting more economic activity and growth in the stock market and in crypto. However, that will mean the U.S. economy starts to recover quickly, but how long this relief will last is anybody's guess. That's the big question. We're now in a highly volatile economic environment, so it's almost impossible to look much further ahead with any degree of confidence. And of course, the other macroeconomic factor at play, the war. We don't know when that will end either, and it's drastically impacting every single part of the world. Now, in this environment, McGlone, another analyst, says he expects Bitcoin, U.S. long bonds, and gold to be top performers. Interestingly enough, gold has outperformed Bitcoin for the first time in 11 years, although he accepts there will be bumps in the road as the economy gradually stabilizes. According to Glenn Goodman, the other analyst we referenced earlier, he says we don't need a return to economic growth to kickstart the crypto market. We just need a recovery in the NASDAQ index of tech stocks. Cryptos have been highly correlated with the fall in the NASDAQ since November, and they've been highly correlated with tech stocks for quite some time since that fall as well. This is what he told CryptoNews.com. Basically, Goodman's prediction, the other analyst, he says that stocks will rally as soon as inflation starts declining, and the Fed indicates that they will stop or limit lowering the rates. Of course, when this is going to happen is anybody's guess. Regardless of when economic growth returns, Mike McGlone predicts that Bitcoin will still be a better bet than most other assets, particularly when we return to low inflation environment. He's not necessarily as optimistic about most other crypto assets, though. So I want to stop here and provide my thoughts on that. I've actually been saying this in some different words over the past few weeks. I feel like given the macroeconomic factors at play in our economic downturn, uh, in our world, this is a chance for crypto to grow up. It's going through these growing pains. Will meme coins be here in 2023 at the same rate they were in 2021? Probably not. Will there be over 18,000 cryptos that don't have a lot of utility being heavily invested in when we, when we get some type of clarity and regulation? Probably not. We may be moving past the cycle and the cryptocurrency journey, the journey of the industry, that is. And eventually, there will be big winners. Who all those big winners will be, I don't know. My best guess is that Bitcoin, Ethereum, the likes of Cardano and BNB and XRP will probably be in that list. And there will be others. There will be some surprises. But right now is not a time to degen or invest in small caps like crazy. Right now is a time to invest in Bitcoin. Right now is a time to invest in Ethereum. And I'm not telling you to do so. You have to make that decision. What I'm saying is blue chips. And also, it's a time to diversify your overall portfolio when it comes to all of your investments whether that includes real estate, stocks, and crypto, or just crypto, it's time to take a look at your portfolio and really start to analyze it. Go through it with you know, a very critical eye and say, listen, there is going to be more shakeout, right? There's going to be more companies that acquire other small companies, maybe even tokens and coins that get acquired by bigger projects. That will happen too. And ask yourself, what do you want your portfolio to look like if we get a huge recession? What, what if we go into a year-long recession? What do you feel comfortable holding in your portfolio? Ask yourself those questions, and hopefully that helps inform you on what we should be thinking about, what we should be doing during these times in the cryptocurrency market. Personally speaking, I'm diversifying into stocks a little bit more right now, ETFs and mutual funds. been buying Apple as well. But I've also been adding to my highest conviction crypto assets. 
been buying Bitcoin and Ethereum every single day since April 1st. I've been adding to Cardano. I've been adding to Gala. I've been adding to Crow. I've been adding to the highest conviction plays in my portfolio. The ones that I think could withstand the test of time if things get really bad. So that's how I'm playing it. Hoping for the best, preparing for the worst, and really taking a critical eye to my portfolio and making sure I'm the best prepared as possible. So that's what I've got for you here in the video. Let me know what you think down below. But these two analysts both think Bitcoin is a great store of value if we continue along this path, which is a good sign. Now, there's a lot of regulatory clarity still out there on the entire crypto market, the whole commodity versus security debate. I don't think they're going to come in and say everything's a security and it's all a scam. I don't think that's the case. There will be still ones that fall away and 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 lose value. Look what happened to Terra Luna, right? But all we can do is continue to learn and continue to uh, critically analyze our portfolio and adapt it accordingly as we get more information. So if you got value here in this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate you stopping in. Have a great one, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.